Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's your friendly neighborhood gamer man here. And I know I've had this uh, set up on the channel before, but what I wanted to show you guys today was that I set up a new bezel here. A bezel with Plexi and a new monitor actually. And I connected my uh, Buy Stuff Store gaming box and my Nintendo Switch to the setup. Um, I had the Switch before with a different monitor. So I had the Dell uh, 2007 um, SP, is it? That monitor, and it would not work with the uh, gaming box. That monitor is actually notorious for not working with Odroids or Raspberry Pis. Um, I've read some different ways to make it work, but you kind of have to go in there and mess around, and I haven't actually seen anybody who asked the question, how do you make it work, actually make it work. So I didn't want to mess with it. Um, my friend Michael from the group turned me on to uh, this monitor, um, which is a 4.3 monitor. I'll put it in the link if anybody wants it. It's actually not bad for this purpose. It's kind of expensive if you can't find it on sale, but it's a good, crisp monitor, bright colors. Um, I actually purchased another one because, and you'll see later, uh, part of this Tulsa um, Arcades bezel comes with uh, with the piece um, that's supposed to connect it to uh, the monitor to easily fit between the two side panels. And I guess, what is a VGA compatible? Um, it must need to be. It doesn't work. And, and he says on the website it doesn't work with all monitors. So you'll see the struggle I went through. It did not work with this monitor. So I used it as a shelf instead. And um, what I want to show you guys is actually how I turned this on. So uh, right back here, first thing is I have a surge protector. So I just flick the switch. It's right down here. Everything's plugged in. And boom, it's on. See that? It's turned on right there. Now this monitor has a remote control, so I leave it in the on position, and then I'll just go up to Nintendo Switch, press the home button, and it should turn on now. There it is. That's the brand of the monitor. It's from China. I don't know why they came up with that awesome name, but they did. So I like to start it on the Wii just so it can come on. If, if you don't mind, you can also use that remote control. Now the important thing is for the wheel to work with both setups, and this is the buy stuff box. For the wheel to work with both setups, you need this, which is a USB splitter. And on that side, I have, if you could see it down there, the HDMI splitter. So I leave the USB splitter set to the Odroid. If not, if you leave it set to the switch, the Nintendo Switch, and then press the button to switch over, it has a delay. And the delay is multiple minutes. If you leave it this way, you can go back and forth and it recognizes it right away. So what I'll do now is I'll change the input to input two, right there, right here. So now it's on input two. We'll go to the front and we'll see that, you see? This beer tempo two, right here I have my button to turn on the old droid. And I don't have to switch this USB because it's already going to be recognized with the buy stuff. When I go back to the switch, I can just press this button, switch it over and use the Mario Kart Hori wheel. And then I always have this wheel and this wheel connected to the switch as well. So I'm really happy with this setup. And I'm happy with the monitor because it also had uh, the speaker out on it. So right there, I have my speaker bar. The Dell monitor did not. You'd need to use, it was made for like, uh, you know, for speakers to be put through a PC. So this way I was able to hook up all my bass shakers and sound bar to it without a problem. And you'll see right here, right away, it recognizes the wheel. And actually, if I switch back, oh, 
right here. Just click this button. Right back to the Nintendo Switch. I could have put this stuff maybe underneath the steering wheels. I mean, it's not locked in for knife for life. It's just a double-sided Velcro, so I could put it down here maybe, but then it would be a lot of wires. So it's not a big deal for me just to walk back there to turn it on. So I'm going to show you guys a little gameplay. It's going to be at this angle so you can see the steering wheel a bit. Um, there's no point for me to do like uh, a screen record or something like that because... We're not looking at the game, we want to see the cabinet, right? So let's go to my favorite section. And um, by the way, this is an amazing wheel for this setup. Um, it's almost plug and play. The only thing I did was I put in a keyboard to map a few buttons. A handful of games didn't have like a turbo button. Um, a few games didn't have the gas working maybe in their latest update it's fixed but i would say 90 percent of them are completely mapped and then it's super easy to do that so uh there's so many choices i even made a favorites list to narrow it down but there's still so much so uh maybe four wheel thunder and um by the way, if you guys are thinking about using a uh, base shaker for this, it works so much better than I thought it would. I connected this base shaker for the Nintendo Switch thinking, hey, they're all new games. They're going to work great. And it works okay with those. But some of these classic games, you get so much amazing sound out of the base shaker. Um, I tried a couple... First, before I ever had this, I tried OutRun and like Turbo OutRun and they suck. There was, there was like nothing there. And uh, so I figured, oh, it's not going to work for older games, but that's not the truth at all. It works for so many of them. So now the only thing is for the Dreamcast games, I have to uh, zoom it. But all I have to do... how easy it is to switch back to to the switch so we'll click this button just turn it on and now i have that paused i can even go back to it so um oh yeah let me get rid of the zoom go back yeah if you want the wide angle, we can keep that at wide angle. It'll make the screen a little smaller, but. Actually, so we'll go to controllers and now I'll press the USB switcher. So I just press that. These two buttons left and right. Oh, we'll do change grip order. You see that? 
now it recognizes the new wheel close that and what are we going to play i was playing cruise and blast so all these awesome new games mario kart hot wheels unleashed fast and furious fast rmx i even have house of the dead oh this is like some shooters pretty awful on the switch but <laughs> the driving games are cool cruise and blast <laughs> Shaker going. Just the single player. Do one of the tours. I opened up a lot of these tours. Dino Tour is kind of impressive. And 1959 Corvette. Well, I've got full blast. Let's go. Back to cruising. <laughs> Very similar gameplay to like uh, cruising, I mean to Fast and Furious Drift, which is the one on the arcade one up cabinet. It's just a modern version. So you can pick from all kinds of different vehicles, like race cars, street racing, performance. Just takes a long time to kind of load them here, but it's all right. I have a sit down, a more realistic sim racing setup, but it's insanely, some of the games are insanely difficult. I know some of those sim guys spend insane hours on the thing to perfect it. It's basically like real race car driving. There's no uh, nitros in this. <laughs> Change the view as well. We have analog control of the gas and brake. I'm definitely getting more into this first person view. like the F1 cars though I love like a cockpit view where you can see see the wheel it's like cool uh, race car wheel like the yoke looking thing I thought I was doing good the guy <laughs> sped right by me yo I 
guess I'm going too slow. Techno Power 2. best running games.
time over. So, so I wanted to go over some of the work that I did to, to, uh, to open this arcade off. It, and this is the uh, back of the monitor that comes there's with there's the no bezel. Bezel arcades, the monitor was uh, too bezel to help hang the monitor. Too small. It should have been a 20 inch. I have a 19 inch, but it's a good monitor and it works for my needs. So anyway, it'll look better with the bezel. On top of that, you guys will probably laugh at this, but this is how I have it set up now. Just sitting on a bunch of books. There's a fridge down here, so it worked. And if anybody ever wants to do a mod with a monitor and you don't want to use um, a Tulsa Arcade, like, a, you know, that setup that they have, or if you don't want to actually connect the monitor to the side panels, you can always build a shelf this way. I don't know if that's easier, but maybe it's good for storage, too. You build a shelf and you can put things on it. You can build another shelf. I mean, these cabinets are definitely good for storage. They have a nice hollow compartment. So I'm gonna to try to set it up a little bit of a different way than it was made to be. So I have some double-sided Velcro here. Actually, it's very strong. I'm gonna put it on the bottom here and Velcro it to the back of the control panel to start. So unless I missed it, I don't see any instructions that came with this. So I believe maybe the monitor is supposed to hold the plexi in place or uh, because it didn't come with any extra pieces. So I think I'm gonna reuse these arcade one up monitor holders and maybe put one up here in the back to kind of wedge that um, plexi in place. And then, yeah, maybe they use double-sided tape to stick to the uh, monitor, so we could do that as well. So there are absolutely screw holes in this plexi and I found the screws that it came with. Very nice little black screws, but I'm going to try that double-sided felt rope that I had. It's really strong and I think it's just easier than for me to reach back there and start drilling tiny holes. And I think it'll be the same difference. So let's see. So this is where we are with it so far. I got the bezel and the plexi in, and I'm about to screw it to the top with that uh, little arcade one-up monitor holder. Came with a little chip here, which sucks, but I guess a little black marker. Should be able to fix that up easily enough. So let me show you how I use those parts right there. You see one on the left, one well, that's the right, one on the left. And there's my tape, so it looks pretty sturdy. I put a little scratch right in the middle of the plexi. It's so hard not to scratch anything on those, but I had this stuff. I've used that before on a few arcades and it worked pretty well for me. So why does it seem that every time I do a mod, it's never easy. The holes don't match up. So we got one hole here that matches up. See right there? On this side, nothing. So now we gotta do some more drilling. So it didn't quite work out as planned, but I think it did work. I basically had to use that Tulsa Arcade's backing part as a shelf because it just didn't match up with the monitor and there was no way for me to match up those holes. I actually ended up peeling back the artwork a little bit, removing um, the side panels somewhat. I removed the uh, 
marquee and I was able to slip so that bezel underneath it. So that's an easy way here. to do it if you guys, if when it doesn't match up monitor, and you guys don't want to cut it, open space. then that's an easy way to do it Top because the there is room there and it fit back together rather nicely. I like to make it open and close because it's a really good hiding spot for uh, my laptop, which my daughter keeps stealing and playing Roblox on and messing up. So uh, I have this wood, which was just laying around in my garage. This is the piece that came with the one up. I just, um, that's ugly looking. It's actually too small now, but it even got bent. Now you can't even really see much in that area, but rather than leave it open, I wanna cut this to size. I bought these magnets here. So I'm thinking I can just um, hook up maybe like three or four magnets, probably three, and uh, I'll make like a little hole or a hinge where I can pull it open and just remove it. Because I think if I put it on a hinge, it would have to open kind of up or down. And uh, then you still have to put a magnet to kind of lock it in. So maybe better to put a couple of magnets in a hole and then you could just pull it out. So uh, carpentry is definitely not my strong suit. It's a skill that I would love to have. I love watching people make these awesome, perfect, precise cuts. That's a skill I don't have yet. And I don't even have the proper equipment. I have some, but um, let's try. So I hope I learned my lesson from what I did with the monitor in the beginning of the video. And I measured three times before I'm gonna cut this in 18, 18, 18, 18. So it should be good. So I do have this saw, which is pretty cool, but it can basically only cut something this wide, which is uh, wide about six inches, five and change wide. So I do want to buy a table saw. My other option was the, uh, uh, what is it called? Yeah, I have a sawzall, you can't use that, but a hacksaw, which I cannot cut a straight line with a hacksaw for my life. So this should be easy enough. So I ended up cutting one more piece. This one is a little wider. Because I tried the smaller piece and it's okay, but you see the option is if I use the smaller piece, use the smaller piece, I'll have to put it all the way in there, kind of back there. Because if you put it up here, it'll leave you like an inch gap and then there's no point. And I didn't cut this size the, the uh, length was actually just what I had I found the piece in my garage so if it's a tiny bit short I mean I don't care you can't even really see down here so it's not really I don't think worth it to grab another one so let's see how this fits so here are my magnets is to put them put it like this and connect it to the wood and then just pull it open and if you don't know what this is then you've never put an arcade one up together before so the magnets magnets didn't really work too well you know it's okay it's okay to experiment so i ended up using this vinyl that i had and i went over the wood so it's not bad something that you don't really look at that much too. I wanted to spray paint it at first, but spray paint never seems to work for me. And I just used a little Velcro on the side, it's sticking out a tiny bit. I'm still adjusting it. But again, it's something you never even look down here. So really, you're like up here and that's all you see. So it's not bad. You know, things don't have to be a million percent perfect and you can still have a really awesome you know, arcade setup, arcade experience. Everything doesn't have to be a million percent the 
the idea is just enjoy doing the work, enjoy the process, and enjoy the game. You're not like a retailer who needs to sell it to people and have everything 100%. So I just wanted to showcase this USB 3.0 switcher, the sharing switch box. This is the one that works seamlessly. So you see right here, my Nintendo Switch is on and I can control this. I can move it from game to game. Now I'm gonna press the button. Now I just switch the input. I'm in the buy stuff box. Testing my controls, see? Nothing's working. You just go back here. I'm gonna press this button. I'm gonna keep it on the screen because you should see a notification. See right there? Generic Xbox pad connected. And now, see that? Everything's moving, working. We're going to racing. Now, let's go back the other way. So, watch this. Just change the inputs. Now, I'm in HDMI 1. I'm in Nintendo Switch. See that? Not working. Let's go to... Click that button, the USB switcher, and I just saw that light up. See that? Working, no problem. I'm really having a blast with this, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope um, this can help you guys with your setup.